Hey there, Nick Dwyer here for the 10th inning. In today's episode, I will be giving you a, a little bit of a special episode, and mainly because I just haven't been able to keep up with it quickly, as quickly as I've wanted to. So, I will be giving you my top 10 left fielders, center fielders, and right fielders in the game today. So, we got 30 players coming at you today. Let's start with left fielders. At number 10, I'm going with newly acquired left fielder for the Houston Astros, Michael Brantley. Now, Michael Brantley, good love in the outfield. Not not really a great arm, but left field, you don't necessarily need an arm as much as you do the other outfield positions. And he's a contact hitter, not a power hitter, which with a lot of these players, actually, you'll see that they're power hitters. But so Michael Brantley's just kind of in the middle there. And he had a couple really good seasons in Cleveland, but last season, he didn't really have the best season. So he's trying to make a new again in Houston, and we'll see if that'll bring him back up. But so as of right now, he's starting out as my number 10. Going to number nine, Justin Upton for the Los Angeles Angels. I remember when Justin Upton was one of the best outfielders in general in the game when he was with Arizona, and he was unstoppable. He was a force to be reckoned with. And he's lost a little bit of that because he's turned kind of more into a power hitter, which is good, but he he was always a power hitter against lefties, but he's trying to be a power hitter against everybody, and it just doesn't always work out the way you want it to, and he's a big strikeout guy, which comes with being a power guy, but still a very good fielder, great arm, he's my number nine, going to number eight. The Oakland Athletics, Chris Davis, not to be mistaken with the Orioles, Chris Davis. I don't think Orioles, Chris Davis would have ever made my top 10 this season. But Athletics, Chris Davis, ever since he's joined the Athletics from the Milwaukee Brewers, he has had three 40-plus homer years, which is incredible. He's one of the best power hitters in the game today. But the thing is with power hitters, they strike out way too often. And that's the same thing with Chris Davis. Chris Davis strikes out a lot, but he's going to get you home runs. He's going to have RBIs. He's a huge liability in the field, though. That's why he's this low on my ranking. And I will go a little off the record. I'll go a little off my thing for defense here because the rest of this list doesn't necessarily fall because left field is the position where you don't necessarily have to be the best defensive outfielder, depending on what stadium you play in. So they usually put their liability in left field if they don't have a DH that they can play. So Chris Davis, number eight. Number seven, a man who plays the green monster every every game he can, Andrew Benintendi. Andrew Benintendi, every home game, he's right there in left field playing that monster. And he can play the monster very well. He he really knows how to read that. He's a very good defensive outfielder, especially in Boston. In Boston, he's a great outfielder. But that kind of goes to tell. That kind of goes, like, obvious because he plays in Boston. He's gotten used to it. He should be good at that wall. He's a good contact hitter, not necessarily the hitter that we thought we were going to see when he came up to the lead, but there's no question that he's still a very good all-around player. So I think he'll definitely increase in the ranking as time goes on, but so far he just hasn't really reached that. He's always been at the pinnacle of very good, but not reaching that great marking yet. So Ben Intendi, my number seven. Number six, Marcelo Zuna, Cardinals outfielder. Now, Marcelo Zuna, well, for the rest of for the rest of his life, maybe he may be remembered for one play and one play alone. And it's always the bad plays that get remembered. Always the bad plays that get remembered. So he's going to be remembered as a good player, but the play will be pop fly, running back for it, gets on the wall, trying to rob a home run. The ball lands about five feet in front of the wall, and he tries to dive and make a catch. Terrible read, and that'll be the play he's remembered as. But Marcelo Ozuna, very good outfielder. What The Marlins, I don't know what the Marlins were thinking when they gave him up, and this was all part of Jeter's plan, all part of Jeter's plan when they got rid of him. They got rid of Christian Yelich, John Carlos Stanton, and Marcelo Ozuna, all three 
two of them are MVPs, and one of them was one of them, Marcelo Zuna, was always up there in play style. He just never got it, and he's a good hitter, not a great defender, but good hitter, and so he's still a very all-around player. But he's going to be remembered for that one play. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Moving on, number five, up-and-comer for the Nationals, 20-year-old this season, Juan Soto. Juan Soto, he, we haven't really got to see much of him so far. And that might be why I'm only putting him at number five. But Soto looks like he can be a force for years to come. He's got power. He's got contact. He's got speed. Defense is his biggest liability right now, but he's not a bad defender whatsoever. So if Juan Soto can keep the keep it going, he'll be in the lead for years to come. No doubt about that. Number four, Ray's outfielder, Tommy Pham. Tommy Pham was excellent on the Cardinals, and he is doing almost the same thing with Tampa Bay right now. Now, Tommy Pham for St. Louis was a center fielder. He had to move over to left field because the Rays have one of the best defensive center fielders in the game right now, and Kevin Kiermeyer. I'm not here to argue that right now. From what I've seen, he's one of the best defensive center fielders in the game right now. But Tommy Pham is no slouch himself. Great offensively, good defensively, just hasn't really reached the numbers he did in St. Louis because, well, actually, I really don't know why, but he hasn't really reached that, so he can't be in my top three yet. So. Going to my top three, at number three, the Braves outfielder, Ronald Acuna Jr. He recently just signed an extension, actually, for probably well worth, well less than what he is going to be worth. But Ronald Acuna Jr., he's got defense. He's got power. He's got speed. He's got an arm. He is a five-tool player. He could be one of the best outfielders we've seen of this generation by the time his career is over. Only time will tell with him right now, but he is one of the best, if not the best, up-and-coming players in the game today. So he is my number three left fielder. And number two, the Yankees left fielder, Giancarlo Stanton. Now, my number one and two, you'll notice, these are not good defensive guys. So I'm kind of going against my pattern here. But why do I have Chris Davis so low then? Because he's a power offensive guy, but not good defensively. Well, answer me this. If you're trying to compare Chris Davis to Giancarlo Stanton and my guy at number one for offense, you're running your luck. You ain't going to win that because he's not anywhere close. Power-wise, he's good, but that's about it. So, number two, Giancarlo Stanton, former MVP for the Marlins. He, amazing at the plate. He can do almost anything at the plate. One thing I always say to pitchers when they when they see something, if if the batter has a close stance, you throw it outside to them. If the batter has an, in, an open stance, you throw it inside to them. It's harder for them to reach the ball in that situation. And for Giancarlo Stanton, that couldn't be more true. When you throw it outside with his close stance, he's a very hard time reaching that. But if you don't throw it outside, he's going to demolish any ball he sees. He has one weakness in his stance and swing. Outside pitches are it. Anything else, he will destroy. And he's not a terrible defensive outfielder either. He's not good, but he's not terrible. So, Giancarlo is my number two. And number one, J.D. Martinez. J.D. Martinez, he has no flaws in his swing right now. Great against righties. Great against lefties. Horrible defender. But he plays D.H., because the Red Sox have three very good outfielders in their game right now. But when they go to the National League stadiums, he does play outfield. But that's because they need his bat in the lineup. It doesn't matter about his defense, really. His bat is so special. They need him in the lineup no matter what. And that, to me, just drew the line for him being number one. Because he, if they need him in the lineup no matter what, that tells me that this guy is a very special guy to the team. And he'll do anything for the team to win. So, J.D. Martinez is my number one. Now, I'll move over to center field. Center fielders. Starting off at number 10. Los Angeles Dodgers newly acquired 
center fielder AJ Pollock. AJ Pollock, when he was on the Diamondbacks, terrific average center fielder. Good defensively, doesn't have an arm, and that's actually what I see a lot with center fielders nowadays. They can be very good defensively, but they might have no arm whatsoever when it comes there. They can be very good with the glove, but when it comes to an arm, it looks like a Johnny Damon noodle arm. So that's kind of what A.J. Pollock has. A.J. Pollock, still a good offensive player, got speed, great top of the lineup guy, and that's what the Dodgers are using him for this year. He's been good for them so far. Going to number nine, Cardinals center fielder Harrison Bader. Harrison Bader is another young player, another up-and-comer that will, I think, take over the game one day. Harrison Bader is a speedster, good arm, good defender. His thing is he just needs to get better hitting-wise. And once he does that, he'll be up there in center fielder. Going to number eight, Braves outfielder and the Ender Inciarte. Inciarte is a very underrated player, in my opinion. Inciarte is one of the best. Get the ball where it needs to go when you're at bat. If there's a guy on second, he'll hit it to the right side of the infield, move the guy over. He'll bloop it for a hit. He'll do whatever it takes to get a hit. He's not a straight power guy. He's going to get on base no matter what. And then he'll use his speed to try to do something on the base passes. Base pass. Base base paths, and he knows how to work it too. He's very good at reading the bases. Great defensively. Average arm, but with his glove, oh man, he, he's a potential gold lover. So Ender and Ciarte is my number eight. Number seven, Pirates outfielder Starlin Marte. Starlin Marte got off to a great start in his career and kind of fizzled out a little bit last season. I think he'll be right back to what he was, but maybe potentially he got a great start because he was sharing the outfield with Andrew McCutcheon, who that's when Andrew McCutcheon was in his prime, having amazing years every year. But starring Marte, no doubt, great arm, great defender, great speed. Hitting is his biggest weakness right now. Against lefties, he rakes, but righties, he has massive problems, and that shows because he's just he's just not quite there against righties. He needs to get better with that if people are going to take him serious as a threat on the offensive end. And as of right now, people just aren't. If he puts the ball in play, yeah, his speed can get him places, but it's not going to get him everywhere. So just because of that, I can't put Starlin Marte any higher, but he he probably should be with how he is as a player. Just I can't quite put him there yet if he's not going to show any anything more in the outfield with what he's showing so far. At my number six center fielder, I have Yankees outfielder Aaron Hicks. Aaron Hicks... He is a guy who has a great arm, great defensively. He's like a lot of these center fielders, actually. Just not quite there on the offensive end yet. He, I, I, I just don't know what, like, Hicks is a good power hitter, but he's not a contact hitter. Contact hitting is not in his game. So he'll strike out a lot. He'll hit the ball far, but he will strike out a lot. But on defensive side, he'll make some great plays for you. He will make a lot of plays for you. Not quite as much as this next day, I'm, next day I'm going to say, but he'll make some plays for you. And number five, this is going to be uh, one that a lot of people may de- disagree with, but I have Kevin Kiermeyer at number five. Kevin Kiermeyer, one of the best defensive outfielders possibly of all time. He will make any single play you need him to on the offensive end. Has a great arm, great glove, now, hidden-wise, he's abysmal. I will say that. He is god-awful at the plate. But when you bring someone with his defensive ability, he's he's the exact opposite of J.D. Martinez. If I had to bring compare him to someone who played a different position, I would compare him to Brooks Robinson during Robinson's non-MVP seasons. Robinson, great defender, not great offensively. Kiermaier, great defensively, not good offensively. So, 
But his defensive ability puts him up there so much for me because he is such a force defensively. He can end the game defensively if he needs to. And that just, that to me helps because I like defense first. Defense wins championships. Any sport, no matter what you're talking about, defense wins championships. He's the best defender in the game right now at center field. Going number four. Rocky's outfielder, Rocky's center fielder, Charlie Blackman. Charlie Blackman, great leadoff player. Never really got a chance to lead off in Colorado before because they had another great average player with DJ LeMahieu. DJ LeMahieu always started them off good, and then Blackman would either move him up or drive him in. Blackman will do the job deep offensively. Doesn't necessarily have the power, but he doesn't need the power. He'll find gap to gap. He'll get the ball there. He has speed to go places. He has the speed. He uses the speed in the field to make great plays. But he also has a noodle arm. He has a Johnny Damon arm. But he will make the plays with the glove when he needs to. And with his average and defense all coming together, Charlie Blackman is on is my number four. Going to number three, Brewers center fielder Lorenzo Cain. Lorenzo Cain, when he was with the Kansas City Royals a couple years ago, he may have very well been number two. He, To me, he's always been a top three center fielder since he's been in the league. He can do some th- things defensively no one else can do. Very good offensive player. Doesn't necessarily have the power, but he's another one of those guys. Has a noodle arm. But what he knew with his glove, if he doesn't need to throw it, he won't throw it. He'll make sure he can make that play with his glove. He'll do it. He's one of the best defenders that we have at center field today. I don't think he's quite as good as Kevin Kiermaier, but he has a much better offensive game, and that's not a question at all. So that definitely helped Kane get higher in my rankings. Going to number two, a player who transitioned from right field to center field for the Houston Astros, George Springer. George Springer probably should be better than he is right now. But does that mean George Springer's bad? No, George Springer's not bad whatsoever. George Springer is still one of the best center fielders in the game today, best outfielders in the game today. He just hasn't quite lived up to his potential. Is he a good player? Yeah, he'll hit for average. He'll hit for power. Hasn't really shown that he's great at any of those yet. He'll play very good defense. He has an arm hasn't really showed that he's anything great in any single category yet. He's probably, I'll put it like this, he's probably the best of an average player in the game today. He's good at everything, but he's not special at anything. And that that's not quite good enough to make it number one for me. And well, Plus, number one, I think it's pretty obvious to most of you, he is a generational talent. So, George Springer wasn't going to reach number one no matter what. But my number one, generational talent, one of the best players of the century, one of the best best players of all time as of right now. He's definitely top 50 as of right now. I personally don't necessarily like this guy, but I'm not going to doubt that he's one of the best players. Amazing player, Mike Trout. Mike Trout can do everything you ask of him. His biggest weakness in the game is his arm in center field. The, that says a lot. He he really doesn't have any weaknesses. He has the glove. He has average. He has power. He has speed. He'll do anything you need him to. He potentially could have won MVP every single season he's been in the league. This is a guy who's just done unparalleled things since he's been in the MLB for players this century. Mike Trout, definite number one for center fielders, definite number one for players in the game right now. I'm not going to argue that. So Mike Trout, number one center fielder. So far, we got J.D. Martinez at number one for left field. Mike Trout at number one for center field. Now moving to right field. At number 10, I got to go with this Orioles player. He made the transition from left field to right field this season. Trey Mancini. Trey Mancini is also a great start this season. He's a very good hitter, especially against lefties. Needs to work on his defense, though. He was a first baseman coming up through the minor league system. So when he first got in the lead, he needed to work at defense, but especially transitioning from left field to right field, you need to work on your defense. That's the biggest thing for Mancini. Mancini, just great against lefties, needs to get 
better against righties, but defense is his biggest weakness right now. So Trey Mancini at number 10. Number 9, former Oriole, Nick Marcakis. Nick Marcakis, man, one of the most underrated players of all time. Nick Marcakis, when he was good, I'll tell you, he was he was way better than good. When people thought he was just a good outfielder, he was a great outfielder. He's been one of the most underrated players of all time, and that's because he doesn't have power. Power guy, power guys are so glorified in today's game that if you're not, you're going to be underrated no matter what. And he was a straight contact guy who was a who's a hell of a defender. Great arm, great glove. One of the best defenders we saw in right field for a while since probably Ichiro, honestly. But he was up there. Nick Marcages consistent with his average. That's the one thing I love about Nick Marcages. He won't fluctuate his batting average. He's been around, he's been within the 290 to 300 batting average mark almost every single season. That that's consistent numbers right there. Considering he's been in the lead for 10 plus seasons, that's the definition of consistency. Nick Marcages, number 9. Going to number 8, Yasiel Puig. Yasiel Puig is a guy who has great power, great arm, good defensively. Doesn't really read the ball like he should, though. He likes to... Okay, he doesn't like to make mistakes. No one likes to make mistakes. But he makes mistakes due to his reading of the ball. But he can make up for it with the arm he has. He can throw players out when he needs to. He'll get home runs for you. He'll get doubles for you. But he strikes out a lot. He is a definition of a guy who needs to be a power hitter in today's game and just isn't quite there. He... He has the power, but he strikes out too much, which that hurts me from putting him any higher. So Puig at number eight, number seven, Andrew McCutcheon. Andrew McCutcheon, so far, yeah, he's regressed in his career, but there's no doubt he's still a very good player. He's still possibly a Hall of Famer. I think he is a Hall of Famer, but he's still possibly a Hall of Famer. McCutcheon, decent average, decent defender. He's not great in anything like he once was in his career. But he's average in everything right now, which if you're average in everything, I'll take it. Andrew McCutcheon, number seven. And number six, Mitch Haniger. Mitch Haniger is one of those guys that some players might not really have heard of that much because he plays for Seattle. So Mitch Haniger, good defensively, brain arm, has a lot of pop in that bat. He'll He'll get you run support. He will get you runs. He will do things defensively. He He's a main piece in that Seattle puzzle right now. They made sure they kept him when they when they kind of offloaded this offseason because they needed to keep Mitch Hander, and they knew why. So, Mitch Hander, number six. Number five, player who actually just got injured last night and... Did not look good. It looked like it really hurt. You tried to get out of the way, but you can't get out of the way with your knees sometimes. Got hit right in the knee, Cody Bellinger. Cody Bellinger made the transition from first base to outfield with Max Muncy emerging at first base for the Dodgers. Cody Bellinger, one of the one of the better young players in the game today. Contact is his biggest weakness at the plate, and then his his glove just in the outfield. But I'm giving him a little bit of slack with that because he's making the transition from first base to outfield. So that, but contact, he's he's a good contact hitter. Don't get me wrong there. But sometimes he tries to use power too much and that hurts him. So he needs to just work on that average. If you just focus on hitting nice line drives into the gaps, the home runs will come. Trust me. I've seen it happen before. I know that's how it works. So that's what Bellinger needs to focus on the most, I think. So Bellinger, number five. Number four, former MVP, Bryce Harper. Bryce Harper is probably one of the most up-and-down players in his whole career. When he's when he's on, oh, he is on. He's one of the best players in the game. But when he's not, he looks like he's not, like, not even a top 10 player. So I, I don't even know what to say about Bryce Harper. Bryce Harper, decent defender, great pop at the plate, and just needs to get way more consistent at the plate. His MVP season, he hit like 330. Then last season, he hit 245. That's almost a 100-point difference. You need to get better at the plate if you're going to 
made some serious consideration for me here. So going to number three. Now, my top three, you guys can flip these in any order you want. These three are definitely the top three at right field, though, in the game. I don't think that's a question. Number three, Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge, good average for a power guy. Very good average for a power guy. And he's 6'7", so you know he's got power. He will destroy that ball if given the opportunity. Very good defensively, and that is underrated for him. He is an underrated defensive outfielder. fielder. He's good defensively, but what isn't underrated is his arm. His arm, he's got an arm for days. He's got one of the best arms I've ever seen from an outfielder. So, you take his offensive game plus his defensive game, it's probably a top three. It's definitely a top three right fielder in the game today. Possibly a top two. Possibly a top one. Just not on my list. Number two. These top two will be the MVPs from last season. Just which direction. Number two. I, I'm going with the NL MVP. Christian Yelich. Christian Yelich. When he got traded from Miami to Milwaukee. It seemed like he had something to prove. And he's definitely proven it. If you don't think he's proven it, well, you're wrong. He showing why he was potentially the best outfielder on that team. Got the offense, got the defense, got contact, got power, got speed, got a glove. Arm is his biggest weakness. He's kind of like Trout, I'll say right now, where he's got everything. His biggest weakness is his arm, but he'll do everything you need him to. No question. Now going to number one, Mookie Betts. Mookie Betts is, I think, the best outfielder in the game today all around. Mike Trout, you can't argue against him, but I think Mookie Betts is the best outfielder in the game today. And I say that in an, as an Orioles fan. Mookie Betts can do anything you want of him and more. He will hit the ball for average. He will hit the ball for power. He has speed. He will steal bases. He uses that speed in right field, and he has a great arm. He is a five-tool player, and there's really not much more I can say about Mookie Betts. So, recap, my top, my number ones for left field, center field, and right field, J.D. Martinez, Mike Trout, and Mookie Betts. Do you agree with my list? If you don't, let me know in the comments. I would love to hear from you, and I'll get back to you with what with what you're saying. For the 10th inning, Nick Dwyer, see ya.